Now, hello everybody, my name is Steve. I'm the Cosmic Pilot at Cosmos Planetarium. We have a, a mobile dome that travels Scotland and the rest of the UK, promoting space, astronomy, and dark skies. I was recently involved in the Calendar Landscapes uh, online lecture series. And as a little extra, uh, we're going to do a little tour of the night sky for December. I'm going to show you a few highlights to look out for in the December sky. So, hope you enjoy this little extra session. Okay, so here we are. We're having a look at the night sky. And the first thing you need to do uh, when you are stargazing is to know which direction you are looking in. Uh, so here, using our virtual planetarium so software, we're looking to the uh, northern part of the sky. And uh, in front of us, we can see a particular pattern. It is uh, very prominent, very easy to spot, even if you have some uh, local light pollution. This pattern of stars is known as the Plough or the Big Dipper. And it's uh, it's not an official constellation, it's what we call an asterism. It's part of a bigger constellation, the constellation of Ursa Major. Uh, Ursa Major has another name as well. And it's also known as the Great Bear. And these uh, names and patterns come to us from our ancient ancestors. They looked up into the night sky. And imagines all sorts of uh, creatures, mythological creatures, heroes, princesses, uh, and other things. And uh, this, uh, those names have stuck over the centuries. But anyway, back to our pattern of stars. Uh, this here is what we call uh, the plough, or the Big Dipper, as we said. And uh, we can use that to help us find our way. The two stars on the end of the pan here we call the pointers. And uh, they point, always point to this star here. Uh, that, of course, is the North Star or Polaris. And uh, it's the only fixed point that we have in the night sky. All the other stars appear to move. Of course, now we know it's not the, uh, it's not the stars that are actually moving. It's the Earth that is turning. But just by chance, that one star lines up with our axis of rotation, how the Earth turns. And it's part of another constellation. Uh, constellation of Ursa Minor, also known as the Little Bear. So we have the Great Bear there and the Little Bear. They are two of the 88 official constellations we have uh, visible in the night sky. So um, you may be wondering why we want to use uh, the Plough or the Big Dipper to help us find the North Star. Why don't we just look for it? It was one of those uh, sort of misconceptions. A lot of people will tell you the North Star is bright. It's not actually, it's the 49th brightest star in the night sky. And it's not always easy to see. The stars within our plough or our Big Dipper here are uh, a lot brighter. And even under light blue skies, you should be able to see that pattern. And if you follow two stars on the end, uh, the next bright star you come to, or, or the brightest star you come to, um, is the North Star. And uh, what we can do is we can, uh, we can simulate uh, the movement of time through the night so you can see um, how this star uh, doesn't move compared to the rest. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put up the uh, equatorial grid for you to see the Earth more like a sphere. And we're going to move forward in time, around about 24 um, hours and 24 seconds. So let's speed up time here in our software. Bring that work back up so it's a little bit easier to see our constellations. So we can see all the stars are moving in a counterclockwise fashion around north. And if we zoom out a little bit, we should be able to see that uh, as we head through the evening. Um, so yeah, so from our perspective here in the northern hemisphere, all the stars seem to go counterclockwise around that fixed point. And um, you'll notice with our, our power, our big dipper, it doesn't matter which way round is, so later on in the evening it will be uh, the, other, the other way round, those two stars still always point to north. And uh, you can see we're, we're now heading into morning. And we're not seeing the sun because the sun is visible in the southern part of the sky. Uh, but you can see the sky is lightened. Uh, the sun has risen. Uh, at the moment it's rising in the northeast, going through the south and setting uh, towards the west. So we'll complete one full rotation of the Earth. As we can do that, we'll see the stars have moved one complete rotation through the sky. 
the sun is dipping below the uh, western horizon there and uh, we'll stop it roughly to where we were so let's uh let's just stop it round about there so yeah so the north star is a fixed point in the night sky that can help us find our way uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to spin the sky around to the south and we're going to have a look for uh, some uh, some of the planets and also some of the winter constellations okay so here we are we're now looking to the southern part of the sky and the first thing we're going to look for is uh, some uh, planets that are visible to the naked eye uh, so throughout the month of december there are several planets that are easy to spot in the evening skies we have uh, Jupiter and Saturn, they're very close together uh, and the uh, best time to see those is in the, the evening twilight, so just after the sun dips below the horizon, they're visible in the southwest. Um, high up um, in the southeast, just after the sun sets, we have the planet Mars, uh, we can see there. Okay, it's uh, within the constellation of Pisces at the moment. Um, but yeah, I, I want to give you a, a few tips and tricks to tell the difference between a, a star and a planet. So to see the, see the planets, you have to look into the southern part of the sky. Uh, they all follow uh, this line through the uh, through the sky. It's known as the ecliptic. So we are on a flat plane orbiting around the sun. And from our perspective here on Earth, the planets seem to rise um, towards the east, go through the south and set towards the west and um, I said we've got three planets visible in the evening twilight so to see the planets you have to have the north star behind your head you need to be looking south planets are also a bit brighter than the stars certainly the ones that are visible in the month of December and um, uh, Jupiter and Mars are brightest too in the evening skies and uh, you'll see Saturn next to Jupiter there as well. We'll come on to Venus. Uh, Venus is, uh, is up uh, in the morning twilight at the moment. Um, but yeah, uh, another tip to tell the difference between a star and a planet. If we can have a look at some of these brighter stars here, we have Deneb, Vega and Altair of the, uh, uh, the asterism known as the Summer Triangle. I don't know if you can see there, maybe we can zoom in a little bit on one of these stars. Uh, but you can see the stars are actually, actually twinkling. So the nursery rhyme is true, twinkle, twinkle, little star. Well, it's half true, actually. It's not really the stars that are twinkling. It's our atmosphere that uh, causes that effect. Um, so the stars are just points of light. And as that light comes through our atmosphere, it gets bent and refracted. And uh, our atmosphere produces that twinkling effect. The planets, on the other hand, are a lot closer to us uh, compared to the stars. They tend to resolve as tiny disks and they don't twinkle quite the same. So see the planets, you need to be looking to the southern part of the sky. Um, they won't quite twinkle the same as the stars and uh, the ones visible in December uh, will be the brightest objects you can see uh, in the south. Um, so yes, yeah, so the best time to see uh, Saturn and Jupiter is in the early evening. Mars will be up most of the night and uh, let's just move forward in time and uh, if we go to the early hours of the morning throughout the month of december we can see uh, jupiter and saturn set there mars moves through the sky uh, throughout the evening and um, just before the sun comes up we have the bright planet venus venus is also known as the morning or evening star uh, because that's when you usually find that it's uh, the second planet from the sun so it's closer to the sun than us so we tend to see it just after sunset or sunrise and at the moment it's coming up in the southeast and uh, it's the brightest object that you can see uh, with the naked eye uh, other than the moon so it should be very easy to spot so for any of these early risers uh, up um, six seven o'clock in the morning throughout december you should see venus shining brightly so uh, have a go and see if you can find those uh, planets all right so we're still looking to the southern part of the sky just a little bit later in the evening and uh, i just want to point out uh, a few of the winter constellations uh, that are visible throughout the months 
uh, month of December. And uh, the main one visible in the southern part of the sky uh, throughout December is the wonderful constellation of Orion the Hunter. Let me make our hunter a little bit clearer to see. So we can see uh, Orion the Hunter here. So I remember what we said earlier, uh, our ancient ancestors looked up into the night sky and they imagined all sorts of things, uh, including, in this case, uh, a mighty hunter called Orion. And uh, we can use Orion to find uh, other interesting objects uh, within the, um, the night sky during December. Uh, if we go back to the three stars in his belt, we can see uh, three stars or the the three jewels within his belt. Uh, if we follow the belt stars down, we come to the brightest star in the night sky. It's uh, called Sirius, also known as the uh, the dog star. And it's part of the constellation of Canis Major, or the great dog constellation. And if the uh, the stars within Orion's belt, or the jewels within the belt, uh, Sirius is the jewel within the dog's collar. Now, Orion uh, actually has two hunting dogs, Canis Major and Canis Minor, with bright star Procyon uh, within that particular constellation. And uh, yes, yeah, so Orion and his two hunting dogs. If we go back to uh, the lines again, if we follow the belt stars up, we come to this star. This is Eldebran, which is the, uh, the fiery eye of Taurus the Bull. So our mighty hunter is chasing uh, Taurus the Bill through the winter skies. Extend it up a little bit further. And we come to a beautiful open cluster of stars um, known as Pleiades or the Seven Sisters. Uh, and if we zoom in a little bit here, uh, we can see. Uh, so to the naked eye, uh, if you have decent eyesight, you will be able to see uh, the seven of the brighter stars within this cluster. This is a grouping of young stars just at the beginning of uh, their celestial life. And um, really nice to see, if you have a pair of binoculars, you'll see those uh, stars really well. Uh, so have a look to see if you can spot uh, Pleiades, uh, also known as the Seven Sisters in the evening sky. Now, uh, back to our belt again. If we, uh, if we look below the belt into what's known as Orion's sword, we have a faint fuzzy patch. It might just look like a, a fuzzy star to the naked eye. Uh, but if you have binoculars, uh, have a little closer look. And uh, through a telescope, it's an incredible object to see. Um, it's known as the, uh, the Great Orion Nebula. It's what we call a stellar nursery. So it's a place where stars are being born. Not only that, uh, they are forming around them proto planetary disks uh, where planets are forming out of the dust and debris left over from the formation of those stars. Uh, so Orion is a fantastic uh, constellation to look at and you can see lots of interesting things in and around uh, Orion. So uh, so if you get a chance, have a look up. So um, at the beginning of December, uh, where we are uh, now, uh, Orion is rising um, in the so east southeast just after the sun sets and um, it'll be higher and higher up as we go towards the end of the month um around about the middle of the month it's uh, due south around about midnight and as i said higher up um towards the end of the month and then into january so uh, these constellations are visible throughout the winter months and uh, as i say there's lots to see uh, not only with orion but within the uh, constellations around them. So well worth a look if you get a chance. Um, so that's just a look at a little look at some of the things that you can see um, every December. And um, what we're going to do now, uh, we're going to finish with a little look at three amazing highlights uh, 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 for uh, this particular month. Okay, so the first highlight we're uh, we're going to look at uh, for December is uh, lunar conjunction. So a conjunction in astronomy is an apparent meeting or passing uh, of two or more celestial bodies. So we've got several lunar conjunctions uh, this month. So to begin with, uh, on the 12th of December, uh, if you're up early, around about seven o'clock, you should see uh, a beautiful thin crescent moon uh, very close to uh, the bright planet Venus. So uh, a lovely 
conjunction in the morning skies and uh, if you've got a camera uh, it might be worth uh, taking a few shots of that, a nice photographic opportunity. Moving on, uh, next on the 17th of December, around about 5pm, a good time to uh, to observe this uh, conjunction, we have a uh, thin crescent moon uh, well placed next to both Saturn and Jupiter in the evening sky. So uh, have a look and see if you can spot uh, Saturn and Jupiter next to the moon. Finally, uh, and this will be visible all night, um, we have on the 23rd of December the uh, conjunction between the Moon and Mars. Uh, I've got set here for around about 7pm, so, um, so it'll be nice high up in the southern part of the sky around about 7. So the, uh, the Moon more than half illuminated and uh, be very easy to spot. Okay, our second highlight of the month is the Geminids uh, meteor shower. Uh, so a meteor shower happens uh, when the Earth on its orbit around the Sun passes through the dust and debris left over from tails of comets. And uh, as that debris hits our atmosphere, it burns up and produces a beautiful meteor shower. Um, a little bit like what you can see on the screen there, although I have sped this up a little bit uh, just so you can see it easier. Uh, now the Geminids meteor shower does happen every year uh, but this year it's uh, especially worth uh, looking out for as it falls during the new moon. Uh, if the moon's full uh, the meteors can be washed out a little bit but on a new moon uh, you'll be uh, get the best views that you can of these uh, meteors as they happen. Uh, now it's called the Geminids meteor shower because it radiates from the constellation of Gemini the Twins. So we can see here, we can see Castor and Pollux, the two main stars of the Twins. Um, so uh, we know how to find Orion in the southern part of the sky. So if we can find Orion, Orion's belt. Um, if we follow a line up from um, from the bottom of Orion, from Rigel up through Betelgeuse or Beetle Guys as it's sometimes known, uh, and follow that line up, we come to uh, the constellation of Gemini. Now, uh, these will radiate from that point, these meteors, but they are visible um, in all parts of the sky. And um, during the peak between the 13th and 14th, you could possibly see between 50 and 150 uh, meteors per hour. Now this is a great one uh, for everyone to have a go at because uh, you don't need any special equipment. Uh, all I'd suggest is if you wrap up warm and uh, head out um, in the evening uh, between the 13th and 14th. Now uh, you will get some meteors uh, from about the 3rd to the 16th but the best time is uh, round about the peak which is the 13th and 14th and a few days either side as well. And uh, yeah, just when you go outside, wrap up warm, um, take a, a, a camp chair or something you can lean back on and uh, just lean back, relax and uh, enjoy the fireworks. Okay, our final highlight uh, of December is one that you should really catch if you get uh, some clear skies. Uh, it is a planetary conjunction, it's known as the Great Conjunction uh, between Saturn and uh, Jupiter. Now every 20 years um, they get fairly close together in the nighttime sky uh, but this is the closest that they have been uh, for 400 years and if we have a look at the software here um, they're so close together uh, they just look like one uh, one object and uh, that's possibly what it will look like to the naked eye. If you have a pair of binoculars um, or access to a telescope um, it will be well worth a, a look because uh, as we zoom in here, I uh, should be able to show you a better view. And we can see how close they are together. Um, visible, they would certainly be visible uh, in the same uh, eyepiece uh, telescope and uh, in binoculars very close together as well. In binoculars, uh, you won't be able to see the rings of Saturn, uh, but you would be able to see the four largest uh, Galilean moons, uh, the four largest moons of Jupiter. Um, we have uh, Callisto, Ganymede, Io and Europa. And the moons will be configured as you see them there with three on one side and one on another. And it will look like tiny points of light either side of the brighter um, planet itself. Um, so yeah, so uh, this is one 
the, uh, you'll need to wait another 400 years or so to see uh, as close again. Um, so well worth a look if you get a chance. The final highlight of December uh, on the 21st, it is um, the, uh, the Great Conjunction. And uh, also on the 21st, we have the Winter Solstice, which is the shortest day of the year. So you'll be happy to learn after the 21st, these days will start to get uh, longer again. Uh, so yeah, um, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, little tour of the night sky for December. And if you get a chance, head out and look up. Thanks very much for joining me on this uh, little journey through the, uh, through the sky. Thank you.